that shows that you are ready for marriage. Quick 10 point. Number one, your God concept and relationship with him must be sorted at the time you want to get married. Don't marry before you know God for yourself personally. I repeat, don't marry before you know God for yourself personally. Jeremiah says, that says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches, but let him who glories, glories in this, that he understands and knows me. Before you get married, know God. Know the God concept. Have a relationship with God. I'm saying two things. It's one is a knowledge and one is also an experience. They all put together. In other words, your values and belief system must be sorted before you are married. Don't make the mistake. Point number two is part of my introduction. Self must be discovered before you marry. If you have not discovered yourself, you are not qualified to marry. And I'm going to prove to you from scripture, it's a sin not to discover yourself and you are married. Chances are that. On what basis are you marrying a partner? Know your strength. Know your weaknesses. Know your personalities. Do these before you marry. Includes knowing your purpose. Knowing your potential. Knowing your heritage. Knowing your destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, if self is not discovered, don't marry. So those of you asking the young ladies, marry the young men marry marry ask yourself have they discovered god number two have they discovered themselves or because they are at a certain age they need to marry the reason is they must make babies is the lowest form of thinking concerning marriage fact number three marriage concept must be understood and tonight i'm going to give you some more and you need to join the master class and pay and learn some of them. As a full year course, you go for an MBA program, you go for a PhD program, you go for first degree, and you went to learn an English weather, and you get a certificate, and you are proud. I am a graduate. You went to learn about England, their weather. Ah! And you paid money. You pay $500 and know about marriage and master marriage, be confident, you know what you are doing, a decision that will change your life. Then he said that it is too much. No, it is not too much. Knowledge is not cheap. Understanding is not cheap. You need to understand the concept of marriage. Point number four. You must have dealt with pasts. Your past, you must have dealt with them. It includes childhood abuses. You must have dealt with them. Don't go seeking for someone's daughter with your baggage. Some of us, we are damaged. We go to marry with our damaged personalities and we damage someone else's or someone else's daughter. No, before you are married, you should be able to have dealt with your past, including your child, good abuses, and self esteem issues. Point number five before you are married, how do you know I'm ready to be married? You must be content with your singlehood state. If you are very dissatisfied with your single who stayed, trust me, you'll be dissatisfied with marriage. You know the reason why? Your husband will not make you happy. I'm sorry. Your wife will not make you happy. You are going to discover a way to be happy within that relationship. Don't put the burden of your happiness on any man or any woman. So in your singlehood state, you must be content. You are living before you marry. Don't feel you are inadequate. No, it's a bad mindset. No. Adam never knew he was. Point number six. Be emotionally intelligent. Your emotional intelligence must be sorted. So emotionally, you must be intelligent. You know when to key in this and when to key out that. Point number seven, for the sake of time, the courtship decision must be owned. In other words, whoever you think you want to date, or you must tell yourself, I am ready to be married. I am ready to date. Don't do it because parents are asking you to do it. 
they won't stay in the marriage with you when we are done may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord lift up his when we are done with the benediction for the next 40 years it is your trouble oh god it is your trouble you will carry it alone madam don't be under any pressure so must you marry him must you marry her own the decision and i'm referring to genesis chapter 24 from verse 50 to verse 57 before rebecca was married to isaac we're going to study today they asked her do you want to go with this man she said yes i will go she owned the courtship or the marriage decision own it number eight how do you know you are ready you must have moved on with past relationship the man who this virgin you the young man you, you know this whole nonsense move on my brother my sister please you are not the first person to be this virgin you have seen god has forgiven you move on don't carry it like it is a sack on your head please move on forgive yourself and move on with past relationship when you see your ex-boyfriend don't be having palpitations no if you need deliverance come will deliver you so that you are free from this burden number nine how do you know you must you may be ready for marriage be gainfully employed especially for the men why is the room silent this is 80 percent for the men if you're not working don't marry marriage is not suicide please I'm going to prove it in scripture at least okay I will leave it number 10 demystify temperament and love languages so what is your temperament what is her temperament you see some of these basic things you don't know them the whole thing will be a messy ladies and gentlemen number 11 I think I'll end here and go to the main seven these are all introduction count the cost the cost might or should have been counted what am I entering into? Am I committed? Am I ready to pay the cost? Jesus said, who builds a house will not sit down and count the cost. Listen, you cry. You cry. I recall Samola when we were married. And then, uh, even when you cough, then she's crying. What is this? She's watching. Samola, you know. Even when I cough, she's crying. So Susan, when she was born, even when you sneeze, my daughter is crying. I said, you see what you have done? You were crying too much. Even when I'm going to preach all night, She'll be in the house. Then she's crying. I'm in love with this Ghanaian guy. I would die without him tonight. You know, and 14 years, she still sometimes cries. It means I know how to do many things. You understand the point? It's, it's, it, for 14 years, to still give your wife palpitation, you, you need, I know true wisdom a house is built by understanding, by knowledge, the rooms are filled. You know, so count the costs. 